Hi, in this video I'm going to talk you through how to use my new video scratcher device for Max for Live and Ableton Live. It's a device that allows you to create short video loops which can be beat matched to your Ableton project. You can load a folder of video clips, then set start and end points in any of them and have an LFO modulating the playhead between the two points, either forwards, backwards, forwards and backwards, have it move into random points or alternating between start and end points. The speed can then be synced to various beat divisions so that it will play in time with your project. Here's something I made earlier using 24 separate clips I made with the device, which I then stitched together in Final Cut. The device itself is actually something I had to make for myself to achieve something that was proving to be very difficult and time consuming to do in Final Cut and I wasn't sure whether to actually make this publicly available or not. Um, it's pretty niche in that it's only intended for one specific purpose so I'm guessing only a small number of people will actually find a use for this. However, if you're in need of preparing and creating a bunch of short time synced video loops for whatever reason then this should save you an awful lot of time. So here's how it works. So first of all, drag and drop the device into your user library and then from your user library into an empty MIDI track. So now we drop in a folder of video files and we can select these from the drop down menu or we can use the movie select button here to cycle through the ones that you want. So let's look at this one. Um, we've got a window here which you can turn on and off. and the device will output directly to Siphon as well. So you can use something like Siphon Recorder um, to record the video clips that you make. So let's look at this clip. Uh, we've got the playhead here, which will move the clip forwards and backwards, which obviously you can just assign to automation and you can move it that way. Um, but we're gonna automate this and make it move on its own. So we can set, uh, well, let's just play it and see what it looks like. So we hit play in Ableton. Okay, there's a bit of like a double bounce there at that first point, which I wanna get rid of. So I want the start point to be actually sort of there. So if we get the player to where we want it and click set start, this will set the start position of the clip. And we'll do the same for the end. So we'll have it going, say, there. And we'll set the end. Now when we automate it, we should see something a little bit smoother. And we can change the speed of this by using the note divisions. So at the moment, it's repeating once every bar. If we set it to half note divisions, it's now twice as fast. Or we can go with quarter notes and eight notes. I know it's starting to get a bit silly. So let's stick it back to um, one bar divisions. You'll see as well, if I activate this clip, that it's moving in time with the beat. This is more apparent when we use these note divisions here. And we can determine how the video is played back by using some of these LFO shapes here. So at the moment, it's going all the way forwards, then all the way backwards. We could select all the way forwards. Or we can have um, forwards and backwards, but in a smoother kind of sine curve shape. So it slows down a little at the start and the end points. Or we could have um, straight cut from start point to end point. 
And we can have it move in randomly, but we'll need to set the speed a little bit higher for this. Or we could have it moving on a like an exponential curve from the start to the end. And the speed of the curve, well the shape of the curve can be changed there. But for now we'll keep it on just straight forwards and backwards. Okay, let's try this with a different clip. Okay, so in this clip there are quite a few different movements, but I only want to capture one of them. I think I just want to capture this one here. So we'll set the start point. And we'll set the end point to there. And we'll see how this works. Okay, not bad. Note as well that you can change the start and end points dynamically, kind of as it's as it's moving. So there we're changing the end point. But that's I think about where I want it. You've also got this offset which will move the clip kind of left or right a little and still stay within the difference between the start and the end point as a boundary. And we can then save any of these into presets. So let's save this one. Let's change the offset a little. Now what I'm going to do here is reverse it so that it moves the other way around. So instead of starting playing forwards, it starts playing backwards. This is so we can get kind of the beat matching right. So now the elbow is coming down on the first downbeat. Whereas if we had it as it was normally, it's coming on the second downbeat. So we probably want that on the first. So we'll keep that there and let's save that as a clip. And now you can just alternate between the clips. Ah, I've actually created the same clip twice. <laughs> so let's, let's change this a little. That should do, okay. Let's save over that. To save a clip uh, in a preset, you just hold down shift and click an empty or a full preset. And then we can switch between the two. So here's a project I've made um, which demonstrates how you can kind of automate some of this preset selection. So every parameter is automatable, um, but let's just look for now at the movie select. Sorry, the preset select. So what we're doing here, which basically every bar we're moving up a preset. So every bar of the video will change to the next preset that you've set. And we can see this going here. And on the device itself, you can see the presets are moving. The other thing you can do is to uh, map this playhead to um, say an envelope follower. So here I've got an envelope follower following the kick track. And what we'll do, we'll map that to the playhead. And now the playhead will follow um, the audio coming from the kick channel here. Um, just a last couple of things to mention. 
Uh, if you've got a movie clip that has audio, unfortunately the audio will not work. Uh, it'll just be silent with the clip throughout. Also, if you're on Windows, uh, I haven't actually tested this myself on Windows. Um, there's a good chance it will work, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, by all means, please give it a try. It's free, but I'm not able to provide any support if you're a Windows user, I'm afraid. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And that's it from me. I'll see you next time.